Do a recent one. Yeah, most embarrassing band story as of late because it shit happens all the time. I wonder which one are you going to say because I have a couple. Uh, from, <laughs> from Warp Tour. Now, when someone has the job title of tour manager, they're representing your entire band. They're representing your band to everyone else on the tour, on the crew, the other bands, because usually they see your TM more than they see you. He's, he's setting everything up. So professionalism is 100% a must. He's right um, down the back. <laughs> when, uh, yeah, I hope you're hearing this, Dave. Now when your bus pulls up to a gas station where it's a festival tour, and a lot of other bands on the tour, including including maybe even the uh, festival promoter himself, yeah, could be there. You know, getting a late night coffee, a late night snack, a Gatorade. Here comes the Escape the Fates bus. A naked Dave Deering comes running down <laughs> from the stairs around the bus, drunk off his ass. So it's um, running around the gas station. Somebody from the gas station comes running out, trying to get him back on the bus. He's air humping. Yeah, yeah, and then. Uh, he's British, butt so naked. in America, this butt naked guy yelling at people in British <laughs> so like, made it even that much worse. <laughs> scary. And then, you know, we had to see the video the next day from, from another group that thought right. it was funny. Thank God they thought it was funny. Alex, asking Alexandria. Yeah. See, like they're, more, they're more... More like guitar minded, players. Easy going. <laughs> but uh, a lot of other people, like, they take shit like that but. seriously. He's, he's naked at the moment. That's, oh, okay. that's what he does. That's what he does. Ooh. And why? So now he's just doing sound. <laughs> <laughs>
that I always do. But Robert, again, I'm sorry, Robert, but there's just a lot of stories. This is one of the most embarrassing ones. We're on tour in Australia with Pierce the Veil. Oh, shit. Here's some <laughs> great guys. Freaking love them. Like, went out with them every night down there. Super easy to tour with. Great band to watch live. Um, and Robert and our tour manager, I guess, were discussing something about the drum setup. And, and Robert can get very, like, well, it's my band and I'm headlining. And I don't want the drums to be weird because he's very, like I said, this thing messed up in his ears and he didn't even start the show. Mm -hmm. He's very self-conscious. Like he gets a little spacey. It, yeah, spacey and he has to have everything exactly right. There's not enough time to reset up my drums. So they're talking about keeping the drums up on the stage. So every time they have conversations like that, I'm like, if there's absolutely no room for the band to play, like, you should strike the drums. Because that's just, come on, that yeah. sucks. Yeah. And yeah, so you've been was, on the other side before. Yeah, but I wasn't there for that conversation. Apparently, there's it's a balcony in the venue. Either they were right underneath or right above. And he's like, fuck that, man, but just make their drummer play play on the side or something. I don't want to play, play on the floor. Play on the floor. I'm not going to move my fucking drums. It's like, how much more cocky of a douchebag can you come on that? I don't think that ended up happening, but the fact that he said it. The fact it, that he said it was like. Even if he was joking. Yeah. And someone over. Just imagine me and the like, other, the other band, yeah. band like, is hearing that. It's shit. like, what the fuck? Like if I was on tour with a band and I heard that, I'd be like, fuck them, dude. That was yeah. bullshit. <laughs> it's happened to us, though, before. And then I, I had to hear that story again from uh, um, from Falling in Reverse when we toured with them. Yeah, Ronnie likes to Hey, I heard, I heard something that happened with Robert in Australia with Pierce the Veil. I'm like, he, oh, uh, he's known Robert since they were little, so he always fucking bags on him. <laughs> yeah, at this point, he thinks of Robert the way we think of him. Once you get to know him, it's, yeah. he's just a funny guy, mm -hmm. you know. But if you don't know him, they just <laughs> take him. Biggest dude. Biggest son. He's got biggest like, sweetheart when you know him. But he's got like a big jacket on him. and stuff, walking through Australia like white fur coat. And he's always like this. Sunglasses <laughs> indoors. Man, I fucking. So man, I'm the legends, bro. What's up, dude? That's how he introduces himself. It's like. <laughs> I love the guy, but when you're a stranger to him, <laughs> yeah, to him, that's how you, that's the rock star life he yeah. grew up wanting to live. Like, he yeah. tells a story when he was in Vegas and saw um, Axl Rose driving in a convertible and was like, Axl, Axl got all excited and Axl went, fuck you, and drove off. <laughs> and Robert thought that was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Like, to him, that made Axl Rose, like, even more of the shit. So he carries that around with him now. Yeah. He carries it. I got in a big argument with him again. We were t doing a tour in South America. We're in the shuttle on our way back to the hotel. And on the side of the shuttle, like, Robert's sitting close to the window. He's like, what the fuck? And it's some kid, and I see him holding up a CD. Like, I, so I think it's a kid in the band that wants us to hear his CD. Robert opens the door. Why are you hitting my band, dude? He goes, do you listen to my CD? And Robert goes, Fuck your CD! <laughs> it shuts the door! So messed up. <laughs> oh, they'll, they'll never forget him though. <laughs> Guys, Robert's really cool when he does stuff like that. Uh, he's okay. been getting better over the years though. I gotta he's hand, progressing. I gotta hand it to him. He's, pro he's progressing, yes. Oh, that's awesome. He's starting to realize those days in rock are over. Unless you're like an arena band. You have to adapt to the new age. Yeah, yeah, and we're all in this together. So yeah. the last people you should ever be dicks to are other musicians. That's especially you. ones you were touring with. Right. We're all we're all trying to do it together. We all got the same goal in mind. Let's work together to get there, man. That's a good point. Not not too hard of a concept. Never know. To understand. You might be opening up for them next time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. Guess what? You guys are playing on the floor. No. <laughs> yep. All they right. Tables can turn. Uh, yeah. They must get turn. It's not that embarrassing to me, but my mom's awesome. And very charismatic. And we were on tour with Godsmack. And I heard that she ran. She loves Godsmack, for one. She ran to the singer's dressing room, knocked on it. Got him, got his attention, and he's like, "No pictures!" And he slammed the door in her face, and he comes out laughing. He's like, "I'm just kidding." Took a bunch of photos of my mom. 
But that's like, it's kind of embarrassing, kind of number twos on the bus, and, and uh, our old bass player's dad came up on the bus and took a number two and took a number two. Stunk up the whole damn thing. <laughs> Cost that, about three hundred fifty dollars embarrassing. Yeah. Twice he did it. <laughs> Again, see that we're just about out at the end of uh, the night, trying to hang out, having a few drinks, some some bands, and we got some issues. <laughs> <laughs> people some want shit right down, and some people wanted to kill Kevin. I don't know why. We're running out of the bus. <laughs> Holding the door shut. He's so, trying to fucking kill me! <laughs> our latch was one. Our lock on the door was broken that week, too, of course. Oh, man. Like, no. Never a dull moment in this game. Yeah. Never a dull Um, When I was younger, I used to pee my pants if I laughed too much. <laughs> so, really? Yeah, really. And that didn't stop until probably my early adulthood. Oh, so I think I'm pretty positive the last time it happened, I was uh, a sophomore in high school. Uh, I was in the marching band, so huge band there, and then we had a stay over. Like the whole band staying at at night in a school before we go on this field trip the next day, um, and everybody's hanging out, having snacks, drinking sodas, just laughing, and uh, I was laughing a lot. <laughs> I was like, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> my knees and pants. That's such a and it happened, and we were, we were all sitting on the ground, like Indian style. They're like, hey, we should go outside. Craig, you coming? I was like, yeah, I'll be there in a sec. <laughs> Didn't get up. <laughs> Had to awkwardly wait for the whole room to clear out. The snuck to the bathroom, like, underneath the hand dryers. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> I'm older, though. I'd be like, yeah, but I'm yeah. It doesn't happen anymore, but I'd be like, yeah, it's my pants. You ain't cool <laughs> unless you pee your pants. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm in an argument over a text message, um, and I'm on tour and have the free time to calm my nerves by sitting down and having a cocktail, it does not calm my nerves. <laughs> It rattles them even further, <laughs> and uh, I'll send a lot of embarrassing text messages. Oh, to drunk and text. Just to whoever I'm um, in the argument. With. Okay. It could be them. It could be at home. It could be anyone. Whoever. Just when you read that in the morning. Like, what is wrong with you? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck everyone! Fuck this! One one embarrassing text message when I was on the, like a first date with my girlfriend. We we're out to this bar, and I was just being a cool guy, like not like not paying too much attention to her, just enough. Just you know, in the middle, playing yeah. the game yeah. still. Yeah. And she sends a text to who she thought was her mom, saying, "I don't think he likes me at all. He's ignoring me the whole time." Oh, okay. <laughs> and she sent it to me. <laughs> I'm like across the bar and I just see her face like red and I'm like, what's going on? Are you okay? And she's like, I sent you this text that was meant for my mom. Oh, I check my phone, I'm like, oh god, that's oh. okay. <laughs> you know what though? What if she sent it to you on purpose? Oh, hey. Shout play like, so you, don't, you don't think I'm paying enough attention? <laughs> like and then boom, now you're paying attention. That's a good point, bro. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Mm, never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta think, man. You gotta think like a woman. <laughs> Start looking like a woman. Well, I've been obsessed with working out lately, so I have a bunch of them. Okay. I'm just trying to see the right angle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See those abs pop out? Not yet, though. I always get told by people that work with the band that you need to constantly stay um, active in your social media, you know, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, when it's Instagram and I don't have any photos, 
I end up having a bunch of embarrassing selfies that I'm trying to take to, to try to post something. <laughs> Bunch of really bad ones that just add you know, up. I never on. saw the light of day, so but I've never taken the time to go back in the week. <laughs> I try to still there. That's, 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 it's like the rows of the same photo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it changes like this slowly. Just have a bad day. <laughs> like finally get up, like the lighting in here sucks. So I gotta find somewhere. Tracy Management is a full artist management company founded in 2014. Everything started with my passion to music really because as bad as it sounds, music and art have always been my biggest inspiration in life and everything I've